Hello. Um, so a couple of guys said they liked the uh, the sort of hints and tips thing that I did on these couple of videos I just posted. So I decided to do a few more, uh, and this one I'm just going to talk about. Uh, it's a pretty sort of basic lesson, really. Uh, I'm just going to talk about what sort of brushes um, I think are cool um, for people who are just starting to use ZBrush. You know, I mean, they're quite new to it. So I'm just going to draw out the cube. Um, so I really wish I had somebody to tell me this. You know, when I when I was first starting off in, in ZBrush, and I was like, I don't know what to do. What do I use? So I just wish I had somebody to tell me like what was cool and what works. So first of all, uh, I'm just going to dynamesh this cube, um, just so I have a bit better surface to work with. Um, so hit dynamesh, and that is a bit crazy. I'm going to lower the resolution on that. Um, yeah, that'll do. Okay, and. I'm just going to subdivide as well. I'm going to change the material to a matcap grey. Matcap grey is really cool. If you're new to user, uh, if you're new to ZBrush, I recommend using matcap grey for sculpting. Um, it just makes it a lot easier to um, sort of see the forms. Uh, I don't know why people use matcap uh, red wax. It just looks really dodgy, you know. Like, check this out. I mean, there's just all this sort of cavity information that you don't really need and it's just so much more clear with matcap grey so I always recommend using this material um, just for sculpting um, just, you know, just, just figuring stuff out but anyway let's talk about brushes um, by default the brush section will be up here um, if you just click that or if you press B you'll get this sort of uh, quick pick window it's just full of all the brushes uh, and I've just recently upgraded to um, ZBrush R4, so I've got all these multi mesh brushes, which are really fucking awesome. I tell you, man, these are just like they just blow my mind. Like the amount of detail I can get out of this, oh, it's just crazy. I'll talk about them in a minute, but in my opinion, I think standard brush sucks for sculpting um, initial detail. Uh, let's just go for it. The uh, hotkey for standard brush is BST, um, and I just. I mean, it is good, but I just, I just couldn't use it for blocking in. You know, it just. I prefer to use standard brush with things like creases in clothing and stuff. But in terms of blocking out, um, I just I don't feel it's a very effective brush for doing that. I mean, you can just see with these brush strokes here, like it's just very. I mean, you can have a play around the different alphas. Alpha six is usually a really nice alpha to use, but. It just doesn't work that very well with standard brush. Um, I mean, I could even go as far to play around with. Uh, if I go into this stroke thing here, uh, I can have a look at these different modifiers and stuff. Because um, you can see how it's sort of quite liney and stuff. I could try and amend that by turning this lazy step down. Uh, the lower this is, the more times it like uses the alpha. You'll see now it'll be a bit smoother. But even so, the higher he goes with that, the, the more sort of stress it's going to cause on the brush and it's just going to become quite laggy on the higher res. So, A brush that I love and I always mention is uh, the Clay Builder brush, um, which uh, the hockey for that is BCB. Okay, and the good thing about Clay Buildup is that it's very like, um, I don't know, it just it feels so much nicer. Um, and if you want to sort of, if you're just sort of sketching around, you can leave it on the default alpha, which is this square brush, and it just it feels very organic, and you can really, especially for blocking in like hard surface stuff, um, you know, like you'll see people doing like these what they call concept messages uh, for like all these hard surface panels and stuff, and you know this clay build is just such a, a nice brush to sort of sketch in your designs, you know. So I would use it for that, but also I like to swap out the alpha on this brush to alpha six, uh, for just for sculpting like organic detail and stuff. Um, it's just it feels so fluid and nice. I mean, I'd like to lower it down a little bit on the focal shift, so it's a bit more um, a bit more contrast in terms of the thickness of the brush. But I don't know. I just love this brush so much for building up like organic detail. It's really good for muscle tones and muscle groups like. I don't know, I'm just going to sort of just play around a little bit. You know, like, y you'll really notice a difference. Like, 
uh, have a play around with standard brush and then switch to uh, clay build up and you'll just you'll just feel so much nicer it's so much more controlled uh, you feel like the pressure sensitivity is working like much nicer um, if you've never used this brush then you're really going to fall in love with it I reckon and if, you, if you've been struggling with standard brush to sort of figure out forms and stuff you know, I'm, I'm just simply, all I'm doing right now is just brushing along with my Wacom um, I've not done anything with the uh, the sensitivity <coughs> excuse me, the sensitivity settings or all like that, I'm just literally just completely default settings in ZBrush all I've done is change the alpha change the focal shift to tiny smidge and the intensity is by default um, but I just love this brush for designing organicness and stuff like that um, it's just so good, you know, you, these really you don't even really need any of a brush really <laughs> you know if you're just really sort of just in this sort of zone and you're just detailing something you know you, this 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 brush is just awesome and a technique that I've discovered that works kind of well is this if you sort of zigzag along different forms and um, just sort of I don't know I've just got my own style really for this just building up all this sort of organic detail this zigzagginess seems to really sort of work well for like building up all these sort of cavities and ripped skin and stuff like that. if you're trying to make something look really sort of brutal um, it's very time consuming but this is a method that I found works pretty well for building up you know a really high fidelity kind of zombie like skin textures um, that you could just not achieve with any other method um, of sculpting you know so I definitely definitely give this brush a go. It's really awesome for just concepting and just playing around and sculpting faces and whatnot. Uh, the next brush I want to talk about, which is useful, is the uh, the H Polish brush, which um, hotkey for is just B H. That's all you press. It's just, it's a weird brush. It's only two keys to uh, select it. Uh, but the H Polish brush uh, basically is a really harsh sort of. Um, brush for defining hard surface like if I come up to this corner here and I just start to press down you notice now that wherever I'm brushing it's kind of working like um, like some sort of really amazing mallet kind of thing it just flattens it down and um, it's really hard to describe the, uh, the how it feels this brush until you have to use it um, it's just the way it's been sort of like programmed in it just it's just so easy to define like hard surface edges and stuff like that um, it is used for like a kind of a real refining brush um, you probably wouldn't you wouldn't use this kind of early on in the concepting phase it is once you've sort of figured out you know what your character is and stuff then you can come ahead and use the uh, the H polish brush but it also does have a um, you can use it in the negative and minus function Sometimes you know if you try to really perfect the surface, you need to use the uh, the positive and the negative side of this brush. So just have a play around with this brush and see how it feels. Um, you will again. I think you'll fall in love with this brush. Uh, it's a lot of fun and it's very effective. You can make some really sort of impressive looking stuff with this brush. Um, just from a simple, a few simple strokes, you know, here and there. Um, just literally just playing around um, and see what you can make with that brush. Next brush I think is cool is Slash Free, which is uh, B S Free. Just just think of the names, you know, it's Brush Slash Free. They, re they really are sort of well named and assigned keys. Uh, but Slash Free, I always lower it down to 60 for some reason. It's just a, a common habit of them I've come to come with. And um, what Slash Free is, it's a really, as the name suggests, a really harsh brush for sort of lines and stuff like that. Uh, I mainly use it for like either uh, if I'm doing like damage to like metal you know like really sort of deep scratches and stuff but you can use it to uh, define sort of wrinkles on characters and stuff like that. Uh, it's just a really nice brush it doesn't ruin the topology of your your mesh as well it's very sort of just straight to the point and I don't know it works well in the, uh, the opposite direction as well if you're using the positive you can notice now you can build up all sorts of detail it's just a nice brush for those really fine sort of things you know that you see in characters that are really impressive you know and the detail is like borderline realism uh, I reckon there's a bit of slash free on there most of the time just for that extra sort of control and whatnot. 
but it's just a really good finish. Never use it to detail things early on. It's a finishing brush, or at least that's what I feel it's it's used for. It's just real finishing touches. So you, you can't really do much with it unless you have like a really sort of nicely defined mesh. Uh, but yeah, that's touch free. Uh, and we're going back to the standard brush now. Funnily enough, I'm just going to press B S T for the standard brush. Uh, and the thing I use the standard brush for, I'm just going to divide this square again, so I've got a uh, real high res. Um, it's getting to get complicated now. Um, I like the standard brush for using it for this. Uh, what I like to do is, um, by default, this will be at 0.25. You want to lower this down a little bit to something as low as like 0.02. Um, just so the alphas are really smooth that you use. Because what we're going to do is, we're going to turn this laser radius real high, up to something like 50. Um, and that is pretty much it. You know, make sure you've got laser mouse on, um, but make sure that laser step is down and choose an alpha. Alpha 6 works fine, uh, but you want to change up the focal shift quite low, so uh, it has like a real harsh edge, but you'll notice now. Now that I've got lazy mouse selected and I'm doing the negative, you can pull out these really crisp edges. Uh, and these are like you just you can see on like a lot of hard surface detail like these really sort of fine edges and cuts that are being made. I just I found slash uh, slash I found standard brush to be really amazing for this stuff, just because of the way it works. Um, and you can I don't know it just it works a lot better than using slash free when you're doing really sort of refined mechanical uh, lines and stuff like that. You know. You can use it as this, you can use it as anything really, you can use it as stitching. For example, if I switch to a, a smaller alpha, like alpha 12, it's not as filling as alpha 6. Um, you can turn on something called the roll, and I usually find something around 3 works well. And you can sort of make this kind of stitching effect. Because what this roll function does, it, it like it suggests, it actually rolls on the alpha uh, at a certain point determined by this distance. Uh, but that's just really cool for microscopic stitching. But it's kind of become obsolete now, as I'm going to show you with the uh, the new the new um, multi meshes that we've got with R4, which is really exciting. But I don't know. I just find this to be a real fun brush for detailing and just finishing up different areas and different models. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. You can use it for multiple things, really. Um, I'd imagine if you get some, you know, a bit more funner alphas, you can probably achieve some really sort of weird things with it. I don't know, it depends, it depends really what you're going for, I guess. But anyway, those are sort of the main brushes that I use, to be honest with you. I rarely use much more than those, to be honest. Um, but I will be using multi-mesh now, which I'm just going to briefly go into, but in terms of concepting and building up pretty decent characters, those brushes will do you, uh, in conjunction with the clipping brushes which I sort of briefly spoke about in a previous video, they are, I just feel like it's a really nice tool set, you know, that, um, yeah, I'm just going to talk about these, I'm really excited about these, uh, if you're not familiar with uh, insert mesh brushes, basically, if you click on this where it says IAM, IAM stands for Insert Multi Mesh, and what it means by multi mesh is once you've selected this brush, yeah, uh, if you press M, you get a selection of multi meshes, and basically you can choose these. Like if we go for this uh, this timing chain, and we click that, uh, we are now have the ability to sort of um, draw on a uh, curve like so, and it's gonna. Uh, all right, right. Okay, apparently you can't do it on uh, meshes with subdivision levels, so let's delete the history there. See, I'm, I'm quite new to this, um, and that is way too many. Let's just draw out a new one, a bit bigger. And you can just see how you can just draw out these lines of these meshes, and the way that they've been made is that they're sort of running in lines. So, um, yeah, they have so many different sort of versions as well. Uh, and if you want to change the different parameters on this, I think that's under the uh, the stroke as well, under this curve, uh, curve step. Let me just lower this step down to sort of 0 0.2. Okay, that's opposite direction. I've really got to play around with this yet. 1.3. Okay, 
Okay, that's not working either. We'll call for just a one. No. Mm. It's going to take a lot of playing around with this, but I just like the notion of that like, you can just draw out all these meshes and you, you just. Do you know like, when you see like such a high fidelity of detail on a character and it was just looks impossible to sculpt? You just it's so much easier now to do that kind of thing. Like my favorite thing is the zip brush. I think it's where is it? One I saw it somewhere. Claude might be this one. The thing is, there's so many different versions. Like, I think is that that's the chains. The chains are pretty cool though. It's just you know like when you see all these, I, I don't want to call them like commodities or anything, but you know it's, it's just a detail you'd never really add because it was such a pain in the ass to do, but now it's so simple and so effective. You know, it just I'm really excited to start using these brushes. Um, it's just going to make life simpler. All I can see it being a bit cliched now, like every single um, every single model is going to have the same sort of zips and the same <laughs> chains and shit hanging off it. But I really do like the zipper. The zipper one is awesome. And I think it determines the size of the brush. Yeah. So it just scales on the brush as well. It even curves around. I mean, that is pretty cool. But like I can say, this, this, I've only just got R4 myself, so I've yet to sort of explore this uh, theme. But I don't know, I just thought I'd want to share with my experience of what brushes to use. Um, and what brushes I've found are pretty cool, and I hope you find this helpful uh, if you if you're new to ZBrushing. So uh, that's pretty much it. Turn this off. Somewhere. Yeah.